Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross from PTCG Radio, and we are back with the top four game from the Doncaster Winner Box. Now, if you haven't seen the rest of these videos, I heartily suggest you do, and you will find links to all of the previous rounds, but rounds one to five, and the top eight game in the description of this particular video. So please go back and check those ones out. It'll give you a nice bit of context so far. Just a quick reminder, we are talking about the middle of May 2015 here, and we are Boundaries Crossed to Roaring Skies. Now, Roaring Skies has only just been released as a set and is not yet legal for tournament play. So this is an unsanctioned tournament, but it's happening with Roaring Skies cards legal, and it's a really good opportunity for people to see these decks in action before they're in proper sanctioned tournaments. Now, we do have... Some really good players here, world players, national champions, all of that. So, although it is an unsanctioned tournament, we are talking really good players with really good decks. And it will, if you watch all of these videos, it will give you a really good sense of how Roaring Skies is going to affect the format, at least early on. Now, we have two players here we've seen previously on the stream. On the left, we have Kyle with his Leafy on deck. He is a senior, but he's won multiple regionals this year. And he's made it to the top four of this, which is an age and open tournament. On the right, we have... Ryan Morehouse, who came 13th for Worlds last year, made top 16, but unfortunately it was a top 8 cut. So, you know, we've got the 13th place finisher at Worlds this year. and We, we saw him, um, we've already seen him in the fifth round of Swiss take on the UK current national champion. So, we're doing pretty good here. So, we see that Carla started with the EV which has got the energy evolution thing where you can attach an energy from your hand and immediately evolve EV into whatever type of... Um, Evolution matches the energy you've attached. Ryan unfortunately starts with a Jirachi, which is both annoying in that Jirachi is a 90 HP Pokemon that you don't want on your field unless you need him. And secondly, you only play Jirachi for Stellar Guidance. Sorry if I've got the name wrong, I do that sometimes. And Jirachi's only really played, so you can play him down and use his ability to search for a supporter. So not only has he got a starter he doesn't want that's quite weak and easily killed... But we've also got a situation here where he can't actually use Stellar Guidance, which he'd really want to do. So he goes and gets himself a Seismitoad, and there we see an Acro Bike. Uh, Super Scoop Up, he's got to get rid of so that he keeps the Ultra Ball. And he could there have used the Ultra Ball to search out a... Um, he could have used the Ultra Ball to search out a Shame in there. So interesting that he didn't, but essentially what he's thinking is... and. He's thinking, well, you're not you're not going to kill me this turn, so what's the point? You know, he, he's playing it a little bit slow, a little bit close to the chest. He doesn't need to get a great start. He can't attack with Seismitoad anyway, so what's the point in getting Jirachi out of the active and trying to kind of draw all of those cards? I can do it next turn. Now, you notice he didn't attach the DC to the Seismitoad, and this was an excellent play from him. Now, we know that Kyle can't evolve into a Flareon, because even if he played basic fire energy, he'd need a DCE in order to evolve into Flareon. And you can't evolve a fire to evolve into Flareon and a DCE to attack in one turn. Unless you're Ollie Barnet. What he would have been able to do, and you see Carl there does play his own Jirachi for that exact reason. What Carl could potentially have done is attach the grass energy to EV, evolve straight into Leafeon, the two energy on... Uh, the double colourless energy, counting as two energy on Seismitoad, would have been 40 damage... Kyle then could have played a Silver Bangle to raise it to 70 damage and could have benched two Deoxys and he could actually have done 90 damage and knocked out that Jirachi for one energy on the first turn of the game. Now the chances of Kyle doing that are fairly slim. But is that really a risk you want to take? Not only that, but if he did that of course, that would leave it open for Ryan to potentially be KO'd the following turn because if Kyle is doing 90 damage with a Leafy on, and Seismitoad is weak to grass, then that's going to one-hit KO to Seismitoad. And that's going to be the worry for Ryan throughout this entire game. Is he going to get killed by Leafy on? Now, we saw this in Kyle's previous game against Corey Kirkham's Groudon, where he wasn't able to do that. But I can tell you in one of the top eight games that wasn't actually um, recorded for the stream, Kyle replayed Corey Kirkham and took him down because Leafy on came out. So we see a Battle Compressor coming from Kyle here, and he's getting rid of a Flareon, he's getting rid of an Empoleon, and he's getting rid of a 
and execute. Now, he's getting rid of a second Flareon. We've already got one in the discard, but he's thinking he's not really going to want to attack with it here, so get it out of the active. Excuse me, get it out of the deck. Clear his deck a bit. He's discarding a, an Empoleon, so we can hopefully use Archie's Ace and Hold to recover it from the discard pile onto the bench as if it were a basic Pokemon, because that's the only way he's going to get it out. And he's getting rid of an Execute because he can then Propagation, which, you know, the ability that allows you, allows you to put it back into your hand from the discard, and he can use that to help fuel an Ultra Ball. So here comes a Super Scoop Up, and it is a Tails, which is unfortunate, but hey-ho. He is going to attach the DCE here, and he's thinking about it, because he's, he's basically weighing up the odds here. But he knows he's really got to attach the DCE, because he's got to get attacking this turn, and he's got to be able to, um... You know, he's, he's got to be attacking, he's got to be able to try and get the train lock on. Because if he gets a train lock on, remember, Kyle is not going to be able to play the Silver Bangle to then get the one-hit KO. If there's only two energy on Ryan's side of the field, then that means that... Ra that Kyle is only doing 40 damage with Leafeon and can only increase it with Deoxys. And he can't play 5 Deoxys. So Ryan is going to need his Super Scoop Ups here. And then we see what we potentially could have seen in the previous game, or the previous turn. He used the Ultra Ball for the Shaman. But here, it's actually worth it. And there we go, it gets the Jirachi back. If something was going to take a hit on Ryan's side of the field last turn, it may as well have been a Jirachi. Because there was going to be, and then we see a crushing hammer here, and he hits the head, so bye bye double colorless energy. If he can keep getting rid of Kyle's energy, it's going to force him to only attack with Leafeon, and that is going to, it's going to really put him back. So Ryan here playing it very nicely. This is basically what he's got to do, and there we see a laser hitting a tails, but we've still got the poison, we've got the Verbank out, so the flip is irrelevant because with the 30 damage from Quaking Punch, there is going to be a KO on that EV this very turn. Ryan is going to have to basically rely on his Super Scoop Up flips and his hammers. Although, I suppose you could basically say that every game. You know, it's, it's, it's probably not a huge, um... It's not a huge surprise, shall we say. Now, we have already seen... Oh, and that's beautiful there. So, he's managed to get just a, um... He's emptied his hand entirely, except for a VS Seeker and a Shaman. He uses a VS Seeker to grab his Lissandra's Trump card, plays Lissandra's Trump card, and now he's got everything available, and he's going to play a Shaman to draw six cards straight away. We've already seen him use a couple of Super Scoop Ups, and they are going to be absolutely huge here, because, especially under Train Lock, Kyle is essentially not going to be able to one-hit KO the Seismitoad. So if Ryan can keep his Super Scoop Ups coming and hit them occasionally and stop Kyle to hit KOing his Seismitoad, then Ryan basically can't lose this game. Everybody always thinks of Leafeon as a hard counter to Seismitoad, and that's a, it's a bit of a misnomer, really, because Leafeon, and as we see a roller skates here, and it's coming up, Tails, because that's a newer, um, on the old Professor Dice, the Professor Symbol was a 6, on the new one it's a 1. That's kind of confusing. So we see another roller skates here, and another Tails, that's kind of unfortunate. Is he going to try that Super Scoop up? No. And we'll get back to Leafeon in just a second. But the thing that Ryan's doing beautifully here is he's not overplaying his hand. And you will see at your Nationals coming up, an awful lot of Seismato players are going to play every card they can for the sake of it. If we think about what Ryan's doing here, he needs to keep a steady stream of Quaking Punch. He needs his Super Scoop Ups, and he's going to need his Hammers. Now, he could ideally do with a Muscle Band here. But he didn't need it last turn, he needs it next turn. He could do with a laser, but he didn't need it last turn, he needs it next turn. So here, we're going to be seeing 20, 40, 50, 100 damage on the Seismitoad. Now Ryan needs a Super Scoop Up, but you'll notice he's got a Crushing Hammer in his hand to get rid of that Grass Energy. He's got a Super Scoop Up in hand to try and fix the Seismitoad. The one thing he really does need on his bench here, as he hits the heads there, that is beautiful, he could have done with having another Seismitoad on the bench, so that if he does heal that Seismitoad, he's got another one that he can promote and attach to DCE too. There goes the Crushing Hammer, and that is unfortunately a Tails. Remember that Ryan also plays Scoop Up Cyclone, and he's yet to use that. So we're not at the end of the world here. And Ryan's already taken a prize. So if he can just hit a laser and a muscle band here, then there'll be... If Leafeon, I believe, is resistant to water here, which is going to be a, a little bit of a pain, because it means that he's... And he's got 100 HP, not 90, if I remember correctly. So it's not perfect here, but... You know, Ryan, he's doing all right. He does need to try 
and um, he really does need to try and get that seismitoad better. And again, we see a scoop up here, and it's a tails he really could do. Now, interestingly, Ryan didn't choose to play that um, the head ringer he's got in his hand, purely because, I, I know he could only, oh, and there we see, ah, oh, there's another tails there. He could have just saved the um, seismitoad and popped DC on the one on the bench. He's had a lot of tails this turn. Because all he could have done was just put the put the head ringer on the Jirachi or the Deoxys just for the sake of it. And then potentially just, you know, had a, had an extra card that he would then be able to draw with the uh, the Shaman. So it's not ideal, but it's something he could could potentially have done. So Ryan here, he's drawn an awful lot of cards. He doesn't have a... He's yet to use a laser. He's yet to use a muscle band it's um it's really not going his way he's hitting a lot of tails as well now i was just gonna say the counter argument for using the for not using the head ringer is that it's a card which is completely and utterly worthless in this matchup it's not going to do anything whatsoever so there is an argument that you keep the crushing uh the head ringer in your hand so that you can then go ahead and Essentially use it as Ultra Ball fodder. I still would have liked to see it come down so we could have got one more card with a shame in. Because he wants a muscle band and he wants a laser and he wants a, well, potentially more hammers if he's got any left. And ideally here, he would quite like to, I don't know, Yeah, he really needs a laser and a muscle band, I suppose. That's what he's really after here and, of course, the super scoop up. Because that Seismitoad is going down next turn. The Leafeon is doing 100 damage per turn. And we see another Tails on Super Scoop Up. That is horrible at this stage. And I think at this stage, it's probably fair to, for Ryan to be feeling a little bit put out. I think that's that would be fair at this stage. But we see the 30 damage. And yes, there we do have the resistance. Leafeon does have a minus 20 resistance to water, and essentially what that means is that with the muscle band, he's only doing 30 damage. And Kyle's going to get a KO here, which isn't the end of the world. You know, he'll only be one prize up and will be going into Ryan's turn. Ryan got very unlucky that turn with all of his tails. He hasn't got the lock down yet. Essentially, Kyle is able to play. And that's, <laughs> it sounds really silly, but that's when... That, that's when people can beat Seismitoad, when you allow them to play. And with all the tails that were coming up, you see here, Kyle would not be able to do this. He's evolving into the Glaceon, which will give free retreat to the Leafeon. Kyle would not be able to do this if there was no energy on the Leafeon because he'd potentially hit a, um, you know, a heads on the crushing hammer because Kyle will be forced into a position to either use the energy on... Leafy on to attack, or he'd be forced into a situation where he'd have to attach to the Glaceon and not be able to attack, which which clearly is not not the case here. So Carl's doing all right, but he's still far from far from home in this game, shall we say? It's gonna take it's gonna take a long time to really get up to speed here. And the Glacian's got the ability Freeze Time, which reduces the retreat cost of any Plasma Pokemon by two. The other thing that does, of course, is it stops Ryan pulling the Deoxys active and stranding him in the active, which would, you know, give Ryan essentially some free KOs, which is a really valid tactic, which at some point Ryan was probably going to try and employ. Use a Lissandra to bring the Deoxys into the active and, you know, KO it for two prizes to put the tri prize trade back in your favour. So Ryan here needs a DCE, and he really needs a muscle band as well, and he needs a laser. Now, even with a muscle band laser, he's not getting the KO. But with, in fact, really, it's, oh, he doesn't even hit the DCE. But that actually works out quite nicely, because, oh, unless, unless Ryan, excuse me, unless Kyle is able to get a double colorless energy, and he does, this first game, 
seems like it might not be lasting a huge amount longer. For anyone that's forgotten, Leafy on second attack does 60 damage for free energy, plus 20 on a coin flip. Now, we know that that only adds up to 80, which will double to 160 and not KO the Seismitoad. But let's not forget the Deoxys on the bench, which who has the ability Power Connect, which adds 10 damage. Oh, and he's putting another one down just for the fun of it. This means that without a head flip, heads flip, we are going to see 160 damage on that Seismitoad. With a heads flip, we're going to see 200 and the KO. The question is, does Kyle have a Muscle Band or a Silver Bangle? If he does, and there we see the Juniper where he's hopefully going to draw one. If he draws one, he doesn't have to rely on the coin flip. If he doesn't draw one, he's going to be relying on a coin flip. So it doesn't look like he's got one here, and that's um, frustrating for him, shall we say. Because it doesn't. if he gets for 160, and then Ryan just hits a super scoop up or a scoop up cyclone next turn, oh, and he's hit the tails, that's gutting. So Ryan here is going to have the opportunity to save the Seismitoad. So that's annoying. So going back to Leafeon as a Seismitoad counter. Your average Seismitoad player, and they're just doing up the damage here, it is 160 with the tails. Your average Seismitoad player, who knows what he's doing, is going to attach one double colourless energy. That means Leafeon is doing a base of 40 damage. Now even bearing in mind that you've got the times two weakness with which to contend, you need to be doing 90 damage as a Leafeon player. And as we've already seen, it's going to take something ridiculous like... A silver bangle and two deoxys, or a muscle band and three deoxys to get the one hit KO. And Seismitoad players have pretty much always been playing cards like Scoop Up Cyclone, Super Scoop Up, Max Potion, etc., with which to heal. And I believe that was a VS Seeker for a Colrus, which is going to net him nine cards. And then, of course, we've got Shaman, Shenanigans, and Acro Bike, and Rollerblade, and all of that to try and draw more. So. It's going to be very, very difficult to one-hit KO the Seismitoad, nay, almost impossible, unless you start using the second attack as Kyle did there. And then, you know, your, your Seismitoad opponent is just going to be able to heal. And let's not forget the redonkulous amount of tails that Ryan has actually hit in this particular game. If he'd hit a couple more heads on Crushing Hammer, then he'd be able to got rid of all of those energies... Oh, and there's a scoop up Cyclone, which is going to be lovely. And we see an Enhanced Sam to get rid of the DCE. And now Ryan's deck might finally be doing what it's supposed to be doing. And that Tails on the attack there for Kyle could turn out to be absolutely huge here. So we see an Ultra Ball going down. And presumably this is going to be for Shaman to draw some more cards. Because there really is no point getting a fourth Seismitoad down. It's not doing you any good. Although it appears there actually isn't one in the deck. So maybe he's got one in his hand. Maybe he's got two prized. And there we see the Scoop Up Cyclone coming down. Interestingly, he's gone Scoop Up Cyclone for the Shaman. The reason is very simple. He's losing the prize trade at the moment. So what he's trying... Oh, there's another Tails on Crushing Hammer. He's losing the prize trade here. So what he really wants to do is just start taking a couple of prizes. And, you know, here... He's only going to be doing 10 damage, but it's with the poison, it's going to put him up to 70. Leafeon's got 100 HP, so Leafeon is going to die from poison coming into Ryan's turn. Now, Leafeon's going to get the KO on Seismitoad, which means that Kyle is going to be down to two prizes, and Ryan is going to be down to four, but Ryan's going to have the next hit. And Kyle, I mean, let's look at Kyle's side of the field here. He's got one Leafeon down. Now, the Ditto's been down for more than the turn, and Ditto's ability, allowing you to evolve it into any basic Pokemon, basically allows you here to essentially just bench... Uh, it allows you to bench straight away a... Excuse me. It allows you to evolve the Ditto into an Eevee, and then immediately evolve that Eevee into a... into a Leafeon... And then he's going to need an energy as well. He's going to have to hit all of that. Ryan, remember, plays Hammer, so that Glaceon is going to be under a lot of pressure. Now, if you're wondering what Glaceon's attack does, it's got one attack for a water double colorless, which does 60 damage and puts you to sleep. But we've seen with all the scoop-ups Ryan plays, that's really not going to be all that great. The Glaceon, again, doesn't have resistance. It does have... Um, it has a, it has more than 80 HP, it has 90 HP, so it is going to be able to take a banded Quaking Punch with Laser, but then it will die coming into your turn again. So what we've said would happen has indeed happened. 
Kyle is now in a situation where he's got two prizes left, but no real viable attackers on the field and an awful lot of energy down. Ryan is going to be only have taken two prizes, be down to four remaining, but potentially in a better position here. The thing about Seismitoad is you can go down, you know, loads and loads of prizes and uh, you can then just stop your opponent playing and make big comebacks. I mean, look at some of the games won by, you know, for instance, Alex Dow at the Nottingham Regionals tournament which i am um, have uploaded to my youtube channel so check some of those old games of alex dow playing seismato slurpuff it can make comebacks and there goes the um head ringer in the same way i said earlier i suppose the head ring is also quite good because it allows you you know if your opponent were to play float stone it means if you drag it into the active your opponent can't play a float stone so we see an end coming down, and we've seen in previous games that Ryan does play the end. We should have been expecting the end. Ryan is the kind of player that is going to try and play the game no, you know, with a VS Seeker ready to get that end. He's going to really try and get the end coming. Kyle is now down to two cards, and that's not the worrying thing. The worrying thing is his board. That Glaceon is not going to do very well. Essentially, what's going to happen is the Glaceon is going to be able to... Oh, I was just trying to work out what happened there. There's no double colorless energy from Ryan. I wonder why there was an Eevee in the active. So Kyle has now got the Eevee. Remember, if you evolve a Ditto into Eevee, the Eevee is held to have been down for as long as the Ditto, i.e. you can then, you, you can go just straight Eevee Leafy on or whatever. You don't have to then wait another turn to evolve. That Eevee can evolve straight away. Ryan missed the DCE there, which is huge because he's given Kyle... A turn of trainers and it looks there like his hand is muscle band excuse me silver bangle juniper or he's got a an ultra ball so he's going to counter out here he's thinking should he go for leafy on no he's not he is going to use i forgot about the executes this is a brilliant thing he propagates two executes into his hand plays the ultra ball to get rid of the two executes so essentially he can just use ultra ball to search for any pokemon without any downside he gets the flareon but he doesn't have a dc he's already gotten rid of one this turn i believe from an acro bike so it's going to be interesting to see if there's a dc left and if there the other thing is and here's the big problem flareon's weak to water now, laser becomes irrelevant here. Seismitoad, with a muscle band, is going to do 100 damage. Now, let's not forget that he doesn't need the DCE. Now, he's got the uh, Glaceon on the bench who's ready to attack, and it's a good job he doesn't need the Flareon now. He doesn't have it. Putting the Silver Bangle down there just because he knows he's going to be... And there's an Ultra Ball and a Battle Compressor. So he's going to play the Battle Compressor just to thin his deck out a little bit. Get some more Pokemon in the discard. He's essentially saying, I, I'm i not going to need more than one Flareon. If his Flareon goes down, he's basically lost the game anyway. Now, so he's, he's just using a Battle Compressor to get it in his discard pile to, just to thin his deck a little bit. Now, the key for Kyle is going to be here, like we've seen pretty much in this whole game, scoop flips. Is he going to be able to hit the scoop flips? And by this, I mean, is Ryan going to be able to hit the scoop flips? Because that Flareon has got free retreat by virtue of Glaceon's ability. Glaceon's going to come in, and although I said it only does 60, let's remember the Silver Bangle and the two Deoxys put it up to 110 and put him asleep. If Ryan hits a scoop up flip, it's essentially irrelevant. I don't know how many Pokemon Kyle has got in a discard pile. Hopefully he'll count them out for us in a minute. But when he does, you know, he might be able to one-hit KO the Seismitoad. If not, he's going to be able to do a fair bit of damage and take it down. Ryan, we can see he's got at least one VS Seeker in hand. Ryan needs to play a Lissandra's trump card here. Oh, and he's just scooped. That is very interesting. It looks like Ryan just scooped there because he had essentially nothing he can do. What I was going to say was that the Sandra's trump card would have to have come down because Kyle had too many Pokemon in the discard pile. Ryan needed to play the Sandra's trump card to get all of those Pokemon back into Kyle's deck. But in the end, he decided it was unwinnable. If he couldn't, um, if he couldn't save the Seismitoad, it was essentially irrelevant. Let's not forget, ladies and gentlemen, that that Flareon had the Silver Bangle on and two Deoxys on the bench. So with one Pokemon, so with no Pokemon in the discard pile, it would still have been doing 70 damage. The Seismitoad had 110 damage on it already from the attack from the Glaceon. 
So, even if Ryan had been able to KO the Glaceon, and he wouldn't because of 90 HP and a maximum damage of 80, even if he had, the Flareon still would have done enough damage with no Pokemon in the discard pile. 20 base damage with none added for Pokemon in the discard, plus 30 for the Silver Bangle, plus 10 for each of the Deoxys, equals 70. So, that was a best case scenario. Even if Ryan played the trump card. But as we previously mentioned, that, that Glaceon wasn't dying. So if Ryan couldn't heal or save that Seismitoad or get it onto the bench, Carl had the KO next turn with Glaceon. The only hope for Ryan was hitting a heads on a laser and Kyle hitting a tails and Kyle losing a turn to laser flips. But that is an awful lot to ask to happen. And it's just not realistic to expect that kind of stuff to happen. But Ryan obviously had no laser, he had nowhere to heal Seismitoad, so he scooped. Ryan is aware of timing in these kind of games, and Ryan knows that if you've got a tiny percentage chance of winning, it's worth it just to give it up now and just try again later. And let's not forget, ladies and gentlemen, that Ryan had very poor flips in that game. If Ryan hits better on the flips, he's probably a favourite in this game. A good Seismitoad player at the moment probably should beat Flareon, because as I've discussed in the previous game... It's not, Leafeon isn't a great Seismitoad counter. Once you start getting laser and muscle band out, you're doing an awful lot of killing very, very quickly, and your opponent just can't, just plain can't keep up. So we see an Ultra Ball going down there with a Head Ringer and a Jirachi. Now Ryan's got a much better start here because he started with Seismitoad. Presumably he's going to be looking for probably a shame in here to draw some cards, although he might be looking for a second Seismitoad so that he can get his healing on. No, he has gone for the Shaman. In a game like this where Ryan is going to be relying on his scoops, it, it, is, an, it, it is a very good thing to have a Seismitoad on the bench. Otherwise, if you scoop up a Seismitoad, it means you've got to promote something else and then get that other thing out of the active onto the bench. So he plays a Super Scoop up here. He's going to want to get the Shaman back. There we go, so we can use it in future turns. And we see it coming down again, and that is not good. And we see in tails on flip there. That, um, oh, that is not good. So we see there, and I, I've discussed in previous games in this tournament about not using Shaman to just draw one card if you don't need it. The only, Ryan was going to play the Juniper there. So, you know, although he essentially, and we see the heads on laser, which is quite good, because if that EV doesn't evolve, it's going to die coming into Ryan's turn, which is going to be quite handy. Those Super Scoop Ups are only going to be discarded with Juniper anyway, so we might as well play them to get the shame in. The maximum we would have drawn was two cards, but why not? So, although having said that, you could argue that playing the first shame in allowed him to draw the second Super Scoop Up, and if he hadn't played the first Super Scoop Up, he could have Junipered, and he would have had the second Super Scoop Up to use next turn. There's no way of knowing that, so it's kind of a silly point, I suppose. <coughs> Now, Kyle here, he has to evolve that Eevee. Because that Eevee is going to die from poison going into Ryan's turn. So he evolves it into Glaceon. Glaceon, as we've said, has only got one attack for a water and a double colourless. So it's not going to be a great attacker anytime soon. But Kyle doesn't want to lose. I mean, at the moment, it's his only Pokemon. I mean, we hope he's going to get another one down, make a bit of a game of it. But if he doesn't, then, you know, it, it's literally his only Pokemon out. So... You know, nothing to really do there. If I were Kyle, I would have played the Acro Bike. Oh, he plays Lissandra to get the um the the uh, Shaman Act was quite interesting. If I was Kyle, and we talked about this in previous games as well, I would have played the Acro Bike before I evolved into Glaceon. And the reason is very simple: you might draw a Grass Energy off the Acro Bike. Now, if we saw his hand, the only option he had. And we see another scoop up there to try and get the Shaman out of the active. And no. Had he drawn a grass from the Acro Bike, what he would have been able to do is evolve into the Leafeon, which has three major advantages. It's got 10 more HP. It's got a resistance to water. Both of those add up to mean it's going to survive a lot longer against Seismitoad. And it attacks for only one energy rather than the Glaceon, which attacks for free energy. And we've seen that with Ryan's Hammers... Kyle might not be able to get attacking with that Glaceon, whereas he most certainly would be able to attack with the Leafeon. And we see the hammers come down here. Is he going to be able to hit heads on one? 
Yes, he does. So now that Glaceon isn't going to be attacking next turn. He does give himself free retreat, which is kind of funky, I suppose. And I know he didn't hit the grass energy off the acro bike, so you might be thinking, well, hang on a second. You know, th th that's kind of irrelevant. Well, I don't think it is. I think we need to remember, because that Glaceon, with a laser, that Glaceon would have died and actually would have given Ryan the win. Um, and there we see another Lissandra. He's going to retreat the Glaceon into the Deoxys because he can't attack this turn. It doesn't look like this is going to be a very long game, if I'm honest with you. Kyle seems to be struggling a bit. So card order is something to think about in these games. Just, you know, don't attach the energy to evolve into a Pokemon you don't want. Play the Acro Bike first. You never know, you might give yourself more options. And annoyingly, Ryan's just drawn the laser there. Had Ryan drawn the laser the last game, that Glaceon would have died, and we would be on to game three already. So, Ryan here is he's trying to get that active shame in out of the active. So we see a fairly brutal Juniper there. But the thing to remember about these Seismitoad decks is you draw through so many cards so quickly that you just draw through your deck and play Trump card anyway. So it doesn't really matter if you're discarding all of these things, which is useful, shall we say. So there comes down the roller skates, and we see an Acro Bike coming down. And what have we got? We've got a VS Seeker there, which is useful. Now, we have got a double colorless energy, but remember, Ryan doesn't want to play double colorless after double colorless because Eevee can evolve in one turn. Eevee's one of those attackers I like where you can go from zero to attacking in one turn, by which I mean Kyle can just bench an Eevee, attach a grass energy, evolve immediately up into Leafeon, and then be attacking that turn. And as we've mentioned, one double colorless on the field, not a big deal. Two double colorless on the field, you now need a single Deoxys, and you've got the one hit KO with one energy. So the Deoxys wakes up, and that is, of course, absolutely huge, because Deoxys has a retreat cost of two, and Glaceon has f gives free retreat to the Deoxys. And there's an interesting decision there from Kyle to just give up the Deoxys. Deoxys has 110 damage on, he is going to die this turn from the Quaking Punch, but Kyle, I suppose, for, you know, even if I go down a couple of prizes, I need to get some attackers going here. And he's drawn nothing, he's scooped, we're on to game three already. Kyle there, giving up the Deoxys might have seemed like a silly idea, but I think it was unequivocally the play. Because if you lose your Glaceon, whatever he put active was going to get... If he left the Deoxys active, it was going to die. If he put the Glaceon active, it was going to die. By leaving... The Deoxys in the active, he goes down two prizes, but he might be able to hit a double colorless energy, attack with a Glaceon for at least 60 damage the following turn, because there's always a chance of getting more Deoxys, although we know he's not going to have Muscle Band or Silver Bangle, because he's trainer locked from Ryan's Quaking Punch. But he can maybe do a bit of damage there, set up a KO for the following turn, maybe put Ryan asleep, and if he stays asleep and can't hit a, a scoop or a switch or something like that, then it gives... Kyle a turn of trainers the following turn. It's a very slim hope, but if he puts a Glaceon active, the Glaceon dies and all he's got left is a Deoxys and nothing else. And of course, with the Glaceon dead, he's not going to be able to retreat the Deoxys out of the active, so before he's able to attack, he's going to probably lose a Deoxys as well. So he did, although it seemed like a silly play, potentially it, it was absolutely the correct play. So we are one game all here, but the advantage probably, well, in one respect goes to Kyle, because he won the first game, lost the second, it means he's going first in game three. Still, you know, taking even decks and even players, I've got to give the benefit to Seismitoad if they can hit a few heads, because you just take KOs so quickly. You've got the option to strand your opponent's a a Pokemon in the active and use you know, Laser and Quaking Punch to take easy prizes. Although, as Kyle has shown us, the fact that... Oh, we have a mulligan from Ryan as well. The Glaceon really does help with that. It means the only one that can be stranded active is Jirachi. Although, having said that, with 90 HP, that's kind of fun because Ryan is hopefully going to do 50 with a banded Quaking Punch, add the 30 from the Laser, and then it's going to die going into Ryan's turn. So he gets a free hit on whatever goes up next. But it's also only got a retreat cost of one, so it, you can manually retreat it. But if Ryan can keep getting rid of energy here, he's probably going to win this game. 
Ooh, and here's something interesting. Seismitoad versus Eevee. Now, the Eevee, if I remember correctly, he's got 50 HP, might be 60, I think it's 50, which means Quaking Punch, Laser Verbank, or Muscle Banded Quaking Punch is going to be enough to get the KO here. And that means that that Eevee is probably going down next turn. Ooh, that is not good. Because Eevee really needs... And, yeah, no, I, I wouldn't have attached that double colorless energy to the Eevee. It does have 50, dam uh, 50 HP. Because by attaching the double colorless energy, even though it's the first turn of the game, he still could have evolved that Eevee this turn. He's put the DCE on the Eevee. He's going to need to get it out of the active because it's going to take a muscle band DCE or a DCE laser Verbank in order to KO that Eevee. And that Eevee is going to go down almost certainly next turn. Kyle's got to, Kyle's got to imagine that the Eevee is going to go down next turn. And the Seismitoad is really going to get into a good position there. Even though he's got a computer search for a Juniper here... And he's going to play the Juniper, so you could say, oh, well, he was going to just discard the DC anyway. Now, here is the exception, of course. He's played a Floatstone. So now he can get the Eevee onto the bench. It's still not my preferred course of action. I would have rather waited, see if I got a basic energy and evolved. Again, you evolve into Leafeon and Seismitoad's down to 10 damage without a muscle band. The key here, of course, is that Kyle did have a floatstone to retreat the EV. He didn't have a basic energy to use to evolve up. So maybe what he actually did was the best play in the long run. So here we go, a battle compressor, and he's going to want to get rid of an Empoleon, which he hasn't been able to get out yet, but it's, it's such an efficient attacker in terms of being able to do, you know, a lot of damage for just one water energy. Um, he's going to get rid of his Execute, and presumably he's going to want to get rid of the other Execute, unless it's in his hand. Is he playing two Battle Compressors here? I think he might be playing two Battle Compressors in one. I wouldn't have got rid of Flareon. It, it, I know he plays two Execute, and we can see that one isn't prized. It might be that he's got one in his hand. I would keep the Flareon in the deck, so you're more likely to get the Flareon that you need to be attacking with next turn. Um, I can't see the Execute, and I don't know where that other Execute is, but I really would have... Oh, unless the other Execute was already in the discard pile, which is, of course, a possibility. Especially as he's not getting anything out of the... Yeah... So it seems like the other race he was already in the discard because he, he didn't discard any cards to play the Ultra Ball, which suggests that the other... Yeah, and he's doing it again, so we must have both executes in the discard pile, which is why he's able to just play the Ultra Ball without discarding anything. I still would have liked him to not discard the Flareon out of the deck, though, because he's going to need the Flareon. I also would like to see him play... See, on the one hand, I'd want to see him play an Ultra Ball, to get the Flary on this turn, I mean, he's got to assume he's going to be train locked next turn, so he can't play the Ultra Ball next turn. He's got to play it this turn. But I still would like to see him play the Ultra Ball in order to get the... Um, yeah, in order to get the Flary on, just so Ryan only plays probably one end, maybe two. He's not likely to end this turn. Oh, he's got to play that Lissandra if he's got one in hand. Oh, is that a Zerisic? No, I think I missed Saw. If he's got Lissandra in hand, killing that Eevee on the bench would be brutal. Oh no, but he's just using the Xerosid to get rid of a DC. That's also pretty harsh. I would like to have the Flareon in hand just so he definitely had it for next turn. Now he has got a DC in hand. And he's got an N and a Leafeon. But the Leafeon would only be doing 100 damage with a 1 Deoxys on the bench. And Leafeon, you don't really want to waste a DC on a Leafeon if you can help it. You'd really like to get Leafeon on one basic energy. But then if you attach the energy, you know, he, what he could do is evolve into Leafeon manually next turn and then play the end hoping to get a basic energy so we, so we can attack with a Leafeon without having to waste the DCE. But then if he plays the end, there's no guarantee of hitting a basic energy and then he really is on the back foot. So Ryan here goes up one prize. And it's not that Kyle's deck can't handle Seismitoad. It's just that it's... It's so difficult 
to get going against Seismitoad. You know, first turn of the game, he's hitting for 50 damage, he's taken a prize, and he's trainer locked Kyle, who has Ryan. So, you know, here he's going to want to get lasers and all of that, but it's. You, you start to think, well, what can Kyle actually do here? And the answer is maybe not too much of anything. Now here he's going to hit for 100 damage against the Seismitoad. And if Ryan doesn't get a laser, then he's going to have a few turns. Oh, we see Ryan's got a laser here. So there goes 100 damage, which is good. But it's his only attacker. He's got no other Eevee down. Doesn't seem to have too much of anything. Ryan here is going to be able to play a laser and do 60 damage to the Leafeon. Which means the Leafeon has got one more hit and then he's going to die next turn. He's going to die even if Ryan doesn't attack next turn. He'll be on 60 at the end of Ryan's turn, 90 at the end of Kyle's turn. And then he will die coming into, going back into Kyle's turn. Now we see, oh, and that's a brilliant heads on the scoop up there. And of course, as I previously mentioned... What that means is you can just promote the bench seismitoad, attach the DCE and the muscle band, and then you can just bench the other seismitoad. So it really is quite an advantage there. There go the other seismitoads, and this is not looking good for Kyle. We saw in the previous game when, when Ryan didn't slow him down enough, Kyle was really able to get going and get some stuff moving. Here, however, we don't see that same thing, and it it really isn't looking good. It really isn't looking good for Kyle at all here. We see the startling megaphone coming down. And you'll see here that, you know, Ryan's playing it exceptionally well. He's keeping one DCE on the field at all times, no more. Let's say even with two DCEs, all you would need is one Deoxys to get the KO. He's playing a scoop up Cyclone here because he knows he's probably not going to need it next turn. Now... And also, he really wants to draw into an Enhanced Hammer to try and get rid of that DCE. There goes a Head Ringer on the Deoxys, just to get rid of a card, to be honest. And there we see a scoop up. We get the Seismato, the Shaman, sorry. The Shaman's going to go down, draw a few more cards. He really wants to get rid of that energy. There is the Crushing Hammer. And another Tails, right? It's not hitting his hammers this game at all, which is very unfortunate. But, you know, even though Ryan's ahead one prize to zero... You start to worry about what he's going to be able to do here. Now, he could retreat. You know, he could potentially go... Kyle could go EV, Water Energy, Glaceon, and free retreat the Leafeon. But what would it really accomplish? Now, what I would like to see at some point in the near future is Ryan bringing up uh, the Jirachi to get an easy two prizes. But he's not in any hurry to do that. That Leafeon needs to go down. Now... I mean, what, what I'm basically thinking here is that Ryan, Kyle, wants to get the one-hit KO with a Leafy on. But he needs a grass energy and he needs a head. He doesn't appear to have the grass energy, which is not ideal. Now that's interesting. Now we see an Aldino comes down, cures the poison, and takes off 10 HP, or 10 damage, puts on 10 HP. Still not going to make a huge difference if Ryan's got a laser. Ryan's got the KO here anyway. He's going to be doing 30 damage. So with a laser, that would go up to 60 and it would get the KO. But it means he's going to have to have a laser. Oh, and there goes a scoop up Cyclone, the Ace spec, which means the Cymatoe can go active again. And we've got a DC and we've got the Muscle Band. And it's as if that last attack never happened. Had Kyle had a Grass Energy, then a Heads there would have got the KO on Seismitoad. And then... As we've seen, one of the downsides of Ryan's strategy here is if you're only ever attaching one energy per turn, you know, if you've, oh, excuse me, if you've only got one energy in any one turn on the field, it means you've got to find a DCE the turn after your Seismitoad gets KO'd. And we have seen in the previous games there were a couple of situations where Kyle got the KO and Ryan was actually unable to retaliate with the DCE the next turn. Still playing it absolutely correctly as far as I'm concerned, but it still potentially it, it is an issue it will give or it could give Kyle another turn of trainers which incidentally as I've said is still better than giving him one hit KOs with a single energy 
There goes the enhanced hammer. Ryan really doesn't want to give Kyle the opportunity to get one hit KOs here. And Kyle now is in a fairly poor position. Now we see Lissandra on the Shaman just because he needs to try and buy a turn. But he's got no energy. He can't attack. Oh, and that's a cheeky way of... Oh no! Okay. Very interesting. Now... What he's basically done there is he has attached a double colorless energy, only very briefly to retreat the Shaman. I thought what he might be doing there was using Shaman's attack to do the last 30 damage and get the KO, but that would, of course, not lead to Trainer Lock. So he just attached it to retreat. Now, we've got two DCs in the discard, one attached to the active Seismitoad, which means if that Seismitoad goes down, Ryan is going to be potentially in trouble. But... How is that Seismitoad going to go down? And Ryan knows that. Ryan knows he's put himself in an awkward position where he's only got one DC left in the deck, assuming one isn't prized, of course. But, well, what's the danger here? What's going to happen? Ryan's down to three prizes. Kyle is yet to take a prize. Now the Deoxys is in the active without having Ryan having to waste a Lissandra, or use a Lissandra, I suppose it wouldn't be a waste. Especially if Ryan can hit a laser here, it's going to be a two-hit KO on that Deoxys, he's going to be down to one prize, and this game isn't going to last very long at all. We just saw a second ago that Kyle's Eevee went down very, very quickly to a Quaking Punch, and this is a difficulty of these kind of Flareon-style decks, and it looks like we have a scoop from Kyle. Kyle has nothing in his deck. There's nothing he's going to be able to do. It might be that time was called. I, can't, I, I don't have a timer here, but regardless, it really... We could see that Ryan was never going to lose. One of the problems with these Flareon decks is that, unfortunately, you are quite brittle as a deck. You need to get going and doing what you do very quickly. And if you can be stopped doing that, as we saw Ryan do in that last game, you're not going to be very successful. But congratulations to Kyle making top four at this tournament. Good chap, good deck, and a fantastic thing. Ryan there had a brilliant result. He's gotten into the final. We can see the final setting up here, so I'm going to stop this video right now. Um, and I will join you for the final in a second. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you comment, etc. I'm going to go and record the commentary to this final, and I'll see you in a day or two with the final of the Doncaster Winner Box Tournament. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.